Hey everyone, I'm starting a new series where we take people's blog articles that they write and we bring them to life with code um, in video tutorial form. So today we're going to start with this getting started with React hooks by building a counter with use state and use effect article. Um, if you'd like to see your article featured or you have an article that you want to see featured in this series, uh, please just drop a link down in the comments below and I'll get to as many as I can. So again, today's article is about React hooks um, and state and use effect. And this article is by, scroll down to the bottom here, Trey, and I'm not going to try and pronounce his last name, but uh, it says a JavaScript fanatic, software engineer in Silicon Valley, okay, etc. I chose this article because it's a really good representation of use state and use effect and conditional rendering and really a small version of kind of how I use them at work. Okay, so to get started, you can either go to a site like codesandbox.io or you can do what I'm going to do and run it locally. You're going to need Node installed and VS Code. So to get started, uh, I'm going to open a PowerShell here and I'm going to have a folder where I want to create the app. So I'm going to type npx create react app and I'm just going to call mine state effect because that's the point of this article is to work with state and effect. So that's going to take a while to load. And once it's done loading, you're going to get this success screen and you're going to say npm start starts the development server. First, we want to get into VS Code. So we're going to CD into the folder. And in this case, it was state effect. And then we're going to type code dot and that'll open VS Code for us. So that's going to take a second to load. Oh, actually, that was pretty quick. And once that loads, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here and we're going to open a terminal and type npm start. Now we could have also done that from the uh, PowerShell command line, but we're going to do it here, npm start. And when you do go to localhost 3000, you're going to get this page, right? And this is the kind of pre-built code that comes along with create React app. So let's go ahead and edit this. So we're going to go into the app. Now there's a lot going on here, but we want to specifically look in the source folder. And I know there's a lot here, but Let's do a couple things. Let's delete this logo.svg. We don't need that. Yes, move. And then we're going to go into app.js. There's a lot of stuff in here. We're going to clear all this out. We don't want this. The only thing we want is class name equals app. So clear that out. And let's just put an h1 in says test. Save it, control S. And now this failed to load. Right, OK. So we deleted this logo. We also need to delete the logo here. It's trying to import it and it's not there. Then save it. Okay, and we go back to the browser and you're gonna see now our browser changed to that H1 test. So the first thing we're gonna implement in this article is a counter. Um, and to do that, we're gonna use the use state hook. So at the top here, we're gonna say import use state from React. Okay, and that's the use state hook. Now we're going to add that use state hook. It's going to be above the return statement. So this is going to be our state. So we can say const. And we're going to call it count. So counts the state. Set count is how we're going to change the state uh, or the count state. So set count will be our function to change the state. Equals use state zero like that. So zero is the initial state. Count will be the state that we can change. And set count is how we change it. Now inside of the div is we're going to create, <clears throat> inside of the div with class name app is we're going to create another div like this. And inside we'll say count and we're going to set it equal to our count um, that's in use state. So if we save it now, I think we can go back and it should be zero, right? Yep, so you're going to see here it says count zero, okay? And that's really small. Um, so let's make that bigger. Let's make this an H1. Okay, much better, count zero. And next we're gonna add a button underneath it and that's how we're gonna increment it by clicking the button. So we're gonna say button and we're gonna say, we're gonna call it, put the text in it says increment. And on click, we want the button to increment the count, right? So we'll say on click. Um, in React, it's gonna be click with a capital C here, okay? Different than if you're using uh, JavaScript. So on click. Um, equals, you need these curly brackets, and we're going to put in a 
arrow function here and we're going to say on click we want to change the count so set counts we're using this set count up here and all we got to do is say count plus one so every time the increment button is clicked this function fires and it takes one and adds it to the count so let's save that it's compiling let's go over here and look okay so count zero we click increment counts one increment counts two increment counts three now there's a lot more we can do with this okay so now we're going to add uh, some different buttons in there. So a couple different buttons that allow us to increment the counter by different numbers. So to do that, we're going to go above the function itself. And we're going to say const increments. And we're going to set that equal to an array of options that we can add um, to the counter. So 1, 2, we use 5, and let's go with 10. So we're going to be able to increment the counter by, or the count by 1, 2, 5, or 10 and to do that we're going to make four different buttons that we can press in order to increment the count by these specific numbers so to do that excuse me <clears throat> to do that uh, underneath our count here and we have the button we're going to make a div we're going to put the button inside of the div we're going to move it again in just a second now in react a lot of times you're going to use uh, the map function and the map function allows us to <clears throat> display in this case multiple of these buttons uh, with different values and to do that um, we're going to put uh, brackets here maybe not quite like that and we're going to say increments so we're taking our increments function here and we're going to map through each of those increment function values so increments.map Okay, and it takes each value, and we're going to do something with each value. So again, this array, increments.map, take each value. So take one and do whatever's inside of here. Take two, do whatever's inside of here. Take five, do whatever's inside of here. Same with 10. Um, so in our case, we want to return a button for each one of these values. So to do that, let's actually take our button, cut it out there. And we're going to say return button. Oops, not button. Return. Let's paste it in here. So, and again, I don't have prettier going, so I'm just going to backspace this. Return button. Okay, and if I say this now, we're going to get a bunch of different buttons that increment the count by one. And we'll show you how to do it with the values that we have here in just a second. But let's make sure this works. So go over here, and if I click this, of course, now the count is incrementing. You know, no matter which one I click, it increments by one. But we want it to be one, two, five, and ten. So let's do that part. Okay, so to make this happen, we're going to take this value. And instead of setting count to count plus one, we're going to set it to count plus value. All right, and here, I'm going to say plus value. And values in brackets there, because the value depends on whatever the value is here. So that's the JavaScript part. Um, so whenever the it's going to take the value one here, it's going to create a button and on click, it's going to, if you click that button, it's going to take the count and add one to it. And then it's going to create another button and that button's going to have two as the value here. And if you click it, it's going to say count plus two. It's going to add two to the count. Same with five and 10. So let's save this and see what that is. It'll make more sense. So again, this dot map returns four different buttons, and now each button will have a specific value. So let's go in here. All right, refresh. Okay, and our counter is reset. Now we have plus one, plus two, plus five, and plus ten. So let's start over here. And now our ten does add ten to the count, right? Five adds five. Two adds two. And of course, one adds one to the count. Now we're not quite done. Now we're going to mimic an API call and kind of show you how you can conditionally render a loading uh, icon versus the buttons. All right, so the next step is we're going to get our use effect into the application. And to do that, we need to import use effect hook here. Okay, so this is the use effect hook. And this allows us to kind of create side effects. So right now, the title of our document here is called React App, right? But we want to set uh, the title of our React App in this case, we want to set it to equal to this, this count. 
and then say what the count is. So we want this count to also appear in the title. So let's use use effect for that. So let's go into VS Code here. And we have use effect. So underneath our use state, we're going to say use effect. Okay. And use effect, it looks, the syntax looks odd at first, but it works. So we're going to have an arrow function inside. And in our error function, uh, the effect we want, the side effect that we want is document dot title, and we want to change it right to equal count. Okay, and that is going to be the count that's here. So the state is this will be the number and the word count. So save it, Control S, and so now our use effect. Let's go ahead and add semicolon here. So every time we change, click with a button here, this use effect will, will fire and it'll change the document title to equal whatever we just incremented the counter. So let's see that in action. Let's go back to the doc here, refresh. Okay, and you see it says count zero, right? So let's change it. Count 10, count 10. And you'll see this updates slightly after this one updates. Again, because use effect's gonna fire after. So watch, 11, 11, 12, 12. Okay, and like I can add five. You see how it goes boom, boom, and updates. So let's add two, 19, 19. Add five more and add one. Okay, so um, now the title's updating along with this. Now we're gonna add a kind of a fake uh, API call in with set timeout and create a loading kind of icon or loading text here in place of the button so that we can't just <clears throat> uh, start clicking if the app's not ready. All right, so let's make our fake API call. This is going to get maybe a little bit confusing if you don't have a lot of JavaScript experience, but it's okay. We'll kind of get through this part and get to the conditional rendering that we actually want to talk about, right? So here we go. Um, above the app function, we're going to create const mock API. All right, and it's going to be just a function, arrow function there. And we're going to return a promise in our mock API function. So return new promise. And again, if you haven't seen promise before, or if you have, it's good. And if you haven't, it's okay. No worries. Um, return new promise. Okay. And this resolve, we won't resolve here because again, we don't need resolve reject. We just won't resolve in this case. And we're going to create a set timeout. So after one second, we want to resolve this promise into something. In our case, it's going to be a random number between one and 10. So here we go. Um, set timeout, and again, set timeout takes yet another kind of arrow function, um, and we're going to say const random int equals math. Okay, and this is how we're going to get a random integer between 1 and 10. Um, you can kind of think your way through it, and I'll try and talk your way through it also. So math.seal, math.seal rounds up a number to the nearest whole number, okay? So like math.random will give you a, let, let me type it out and now explain it, math.random times 10. Okay, so it looks like this, it looks a little wild, but it's not too wild. So math.random gives you a random value between zero and one. Okay, it could be like 0 0.47652, 0 0.11111, something like that. And so what we're saying is take 0 0.11111, multiply it by 10, okay, and then round it up. Uh, so the lowest number it could be is like 0 0.00000001. Multiply that by 10 and round it up and you're going to get yourself to 1. Um, that's the, what the math dot seals here for. Uh, so that's how we get our random int between 1 and 10. And then we're going to resolve it. So resolve random int. And down here, Okay, the 1,000 is 1,000 milliseconds is how long we're going to wait for this timeout to resolve. All right, so let's save that. Let's actually add semicolons. Now save. Um, and again, so it creates a promise. Um, it, mock API returns a promise um, that after one second resolves to a random integer between 1 and 10, and that's our fake API call. So now that we have our mock API call, we can <clears throat> conditionally render our buttons or our loading text uh, based on if the API call has been called or not. Um, so to do that, we're going to start with use state here. Let's move the wire again. So const, and we're going to have some state call be, that's called has fetched. 
has fetched. There we go. Um, and set has fetched. So has fetched is our state. It's either going to be true or false. And set has fetched is how we change that state. And we're going to start with use state being false because we have not fetched any data yet from our API call. Um, so it's false. And then <clears throat> underneath that, we're going to have another use effect. Okay. And these use effects, um, we need this use effect first to fetch the data. And then, excuse me, then we can manipulate the buttons. And that's where this other use effect comes in. So use effect. And this one's going to be asynchronous because we're going to work with this fake API call up here, swamp API. And we're going to say if has not fetched yet. So if the data has not been fetched, which right now is true, right? So has fetched is false. So if it has not fetched yet, we haven't called the API, we're going to call the API. So const API response equals await mock API. Just like that. So now we're going to get async await. So await, we're waiting for this mock API data for this time alpha resolve and return something into this response variable before we continue to the next line. So we're waiting for that. Okay. Uh, set fetch. Set fetch. Set has fetched. There we go. Set has fetched uh, to true because we now have fetched the data, right? Um, and then underneath set count, count plus API response. So I think one thing I didn't really clear up here is uh, this, this bit that runs after, right? So if it hasn't fetched, we fetch the data and then we say has fetched is true because we have fetched the data, which will make the buttons appear. And we'll show you how to make the buttons appear and disappear in just a second. And then the set count, what it's doing is saying our count starts at zero, right? But our count's going to start at a random number between 1 and 10. And that's what we're fetching with this mock API. So this random int here that we're returning from this API call, that's what we're setting our initial count to, 0 plus whatever that is between 1 and 10. So every time, our initial starting count is going to be some number between 1 and 10. And that's, that's what this last line is here. I think I failed to explain that clearly. So now the last part here is we want to, again, conditionally render the buttons if the initial count has been fetched or if it's loading. Um, so now we have this has fetched um, state and initially it hasn't fetched and upon load, um, it will use the mock API call and fetch a random integer between one and 10, right? Then after that has fetched is always true um, and it's always fetched then and we'll see the button. So in order to show that uh, we're going to Create some brackets here, and we can say has fetched. Um, if has fetched is true, so has fetched uh, is either going to be true or false. If it's true, here we're going to use a ternary operator. Um, now we're going to say we want to show these buttons. If has fetched is true, we want to return these four buttons in the div. Uh, if it's false, right, else. We want to return maybe an h1 that says loading. So if it hasn't fetched yet, we're going to have it say loading. And if it has fetched, we're going to return these four buttons. OK, so one more rundown of what the app does before we really take a look at it, right? So we have this mock API call. And initially, um, the when the app first loads, it runs this API call. And it gets a random integer between 1 and 10, right? And again, it's a mock one where you can set timeout. But it gets this random integer between 1 and 10. And initially, it sets the count. Um, once the promise is resolved, it sets the count to be the count, which, was, which is initially 0, plus that call. So the count is some random number between 1 and 10 when it starts. Um, and if it's waiting for that random number to appear, it's going to show loading if it hasn't fetched yet. And if it has fetched, it's going to show the buttons, okay? And then we'll be able to increment. Uh, so let's see the app, the entire app in action, right? So save, let's go over to it. Okay, and you can see it says count five here. Let's refresh so we can see this better. Loading, 
plot this, count five. Okay, let's see it again. Refresh, loading, count three. Refresh, loading, count two. Okay, and when it has fetched, then that loading goes away and these plots disappear. One more time. Okay, and you can see the number changes every time. We've gotten five a lot, but that's just luck. Yeah, okay, so the number changes every time, the count. Let's see if we can get a number above five that's bothering me. Six, there we go. And then the buttons appear, and we can increment this count then. Just one more to show that it works on any number. Okay, we got six again. Let's get a different number. Three, great. All right, so that's the application. That's the article. Again, an awesome article here by, I don't want to get the last name wrong, but we'll say by Trey. Um, awesome article, great work. Uh, thanks so much for writing this. Uh, if there's an article that you'd like to see brought, be brought to life in this video series, uh, please drop it in the comments below and I'll do my best to get through um, all the articles that I can. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.